will start with a few things on employability until we can really find the presentation and have it up there. Um, now, especially in Greece, we understood that the development of employability strategy is essential for three main reasons. First of all, the transition from higher education to work is not always easy for students. It is not straightforward. So you might have people getting degrees but not finding jobs afterwards. The second reason is that the curriculum, the program of studies, is a vehicle that um, develops a variety of transferable skills and these are relevant to a wide range of employment. So you might, you might be studying, for example, in my department, education policy, but you are also developing skills that are relevant for other jobs as well, as for example, foreign languages, um, ability to use a computer, um, synthesis, analysis, um, retrieval of information, and skills like that are very relevant for all kinds of work. And the third thing is that the world of employment is changing very rapidly. So permanence is no longer a picture of the work life. Okay, people have to change three, four, maybe more times um, their employment over their career. So the important part is to have skills development. And there is a debate around that. In the University of the Peloponnese, um, there are academics that maintain that the students should develop work-related skills. There are others that maintain that the university should concentrate on matters of academic significance. And actually, in a general assembly meeting, a very esteemed colleague said, we are not an office finding jobs for people. They should do that by themselves. Uh, employers have voiced their concerns regarding the skills of many of our graduates. They are requesting the development of what we call soft, personal, and transferable skills. And students recognize the need to develop interpersonal communication and management skills. So everybody is talking about skills, but let's see how this can be developed. Um, there are issues regarding skills. Uh, the first one is which skills should be highlighted? Should skills be addressed separately from the curriculum, the general curriculum? How are skills to be addressed? And how might the university recognize the progression of skills from registration to graduation? How can you find out as years go by, years of training go by, if students have developed the right skills or not. So, Greece is a part of the European Union. Okay, so now we have it. And we have developed our employability strategy according to the Bologna process. And of course, nobody has to do it like that, but let's not forget that Hub for Growth is a benchmarking exercise financed by the European Union. So at some point, we need to know where we stand in comparison to their general model. So the first thing is the red design of the curricula according to the principles of the European higher education area. 
And this means that you have a first cycle. It's the first degree that you get when you finish an undergraduate program. And an undergraduate program should be three years plus. But in continental Europe, it's usually four. In Britain, it's three. And for some specific subsets like medicine, it might be more than that. Uh, we calculate ECTS credits. This is a very technical subject. If you want to go into it more, I would be happy to provide a template. But actually, European credit transfer systems calculate how much work a student does on a module, on every single module. And the total number of modules should up to 180 credits for a three years program and to 400 ECTS credits for four year programs. That means that a student has to complete 30 credits per semester and 60 credits per academic year. And one ECTS credit equals 24 hours of student work. And we also complete the curriculum giving a diploma supplement that describes all educational activities that a student has done. That means if he has written a thesis, we include that with the title of the thesis. If he has done a placement or he has work-related experience, this goes on the diploma supplement. If he has participated in an internationalization activity through the Erasmus program, this also goes on the diploma supplement. Uh, so, how do we redesign the curriculum? We have what we call qualifications frameworks. These define the skills that a student should develop at, at the undergraduate, the postgraduate, and the doctoral level. And they're named level 6 for the undergraduate, level 7 for the postgraduate, 8 for the doctor. And you should ideally clarify the difference between the postgraduate and the undergraduate level. And we can come back to that and give more practical examples if you think. Now, every module, every program of studies has to have desirable learning outcomes for each skill area of learning. Uh, and these learning outcomes are grouped into four broad categories. So what does a student do? First, he learns to retrieve and handle information. And you have to show how this is done. Then he has to learn to communicate and present this information. He has to learn how to plan and solve prob problems, and he has to learn how to interact and how to promote social development. Now, you, as you may see, some of these skills you can develop through lectures. Okay? What we do now, ex cathedra teaching. But some of them you cannot develop in this way. So you have to change the way you teach. And most of all, you have to change the way you assess students. So, how do you do that? It's a long process. Step one, information gathering. You have to review all the modules that you offer and to express clearly learning outcomes. Now, if you do that carefully, you will find that you already develop skills through a module. We all do when we teach but they are not always clearly expressed. The second thing is you have to identify gaps. 
What do you teach? What do you want to teach? And then you can proceed to the new description of modules and possibly curriculum reform if needed. Actually, this is what we had to do at the University of the, of the Peloponnese according to a given template. The second thing is that you have to accredit or validate these new modules. So, you have to record and recognize formally the skills content in the description of the module. And then you have to assess the delivery of the module and the intended assessment methods. Okay, so here I think it would be advisable to have some examples. If, for example, you want students to learn to retrieve information and prioritize, you have to give them work through which they have to go out and find the information themselves, say on the internet or in a library. And then you ask them to present them orally in a classroom. So they simultaneously develop presentation skills, use of a PowerPoint or a wiki on a website or anything, but you also see how they prioritize information, how they develop the skill of knowing what is important to present, not talk for hours and hours on a subject, but without reaching conclusions. Uh, if you want them to develop uh, work-related skills, you have to have laboratories or seminars or exercises. And you have to guide them, but they do the work. Because unless they do the work, there's no way for them to develop skills and abilities. Through lectures, they may gather knowledge, but it is just academic knowledge. And, well, when you finish with this discussion on skills and what you want to do and how far you want to take it, then you can have new descriptions of modules, of courses or programs of studies, and this should be reflected in the university policy. This means that you have to write up new students' handbooks or course catalogs and advertise everything on your website. At least this is what we are expected to do in Europe. And we try to do it, we do not always success, succeed. Okay, this is the ETF situation, it's not what actually happens. It's a long process. Okay. Then you have to highlight skills development and make sure that your students understand what is going on. You have to bring the, these uh, ideas to students' attention through lectures and changing assignment work. So besides lectures, uh, they should have presentations, essays, seminars, projects, research design, and if you want to do that as well, thesis, writing up a thesis which in Greece is not compulsory. Um, students may choose to get subject modules instead of the thesis, but we consider it the capstone of the program of study, and usually uh, students that have written up a good thesis, they have better options and access to postgraduate programs of study. And sometimes you have to adopt innovative teaching methodologies which appear to have lasting influence on teaching and learning. Uh, case study exercises, simulations, role-playing, there are a number of methods that you can use. Finally, uh, you may include 
extra optional or compulsory educational activities. Uh, the most important of these seem to be practicums, placements or internships depending on the subject matter. And we have also found in Greece that internationalization activities are very helpful uh, to the acquisition of knowledge and or work-related experience in other European Union countries. And I mention that because you too in the ASEAN have your own um, exchange programs that would really help your students open up to all the possibilities that the region offers. And maybe you should explore this more. Um, and finally, as I said, a thesis is a capstone of the program of studies because the student is asked to do his own small research and reach conclusions and write up a long document that is of scientific level and according to all the methods of science. So, this was it. Just a brief introduction of how you go about developing employability strategies, or at least how we did it at the University of the Peloponnese. So, if you have any more questions, or you want something to talk